Mason Robinson. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. So for those of you who are wondering, yes, I did play the sound of an audience cheering uh, during the during the intro video. I, I figured, yeah. uh, why not? This figured like the forum because oh, if you guys great. don't clap, which you didn't, uh, at least it sounds like people are clapping. And if you do clap, well then shit, we're off to a pretty good start. Um, but <laughs> I did put that together for a reason. Um, I wanted that to be sort of an apt summation of the type of content that Chubby's creates. If you haven't seen it before, it's meant to be fun. It's meant to be irreverent. It's meant to be weekend-oriented. So what is Chubby's for those of you who don't know? Um, Chubby's is an online apparel company. We make clothing and we make content built for the weekend. So we are one part fashion. Uh, we are one part, I would say, probably the most influential, um, innovative media company the world has ever seen. Uh, we're also we're pretty well known for our humility and our self-awareness. But not as well known, I gotta say, not as well known as we are for being probably quite literally the, uh, the greatest content creation engine on the face of the earth. So, with that said, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Mason Robinson. I'm the director of content at Chubby's. I wanna let you know how I became the director of content at Chubby's. Um, in 2010, I got a phone call from Tom Montgomery. He's one of the co founders. He said, Mason, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna move out of our apartments, we're gonna buy an RV, we're gonna park it at Ocean Beach. With all the money that we're saving and not paying rent, we're going to start a company that sells Hawaiian shirts and short shorts. So uh, I like to think I'm a pretty smart guy, right? I know a good opportunity when I see one. So <laughs> what did I say uh, when I got done laughing hysterically? I said, absolutely not. That is one of the worst ideas that will never work. This is, you know, you're a real dumb dumb, Tom. Goodbye, good luck, hung up. Um, and, you know, do I regret my opportunity, uh, my decision? Have, I, I certainly blew my opportunity to be a potential co-founder. So I joined the company maybe a year and a half after it got started. I come to you as a lowly director of, con of, of uh, content, consequently. Um, yes, but look, let's not bring it up. Um, I actually think, <laughs> I don't want to hear about it in Q&A. Um, I actually think it worked out pretty well for both of us, and I have a slide. Uh, to demonstrate exactly how, when I was giving, when I was putting this presentation together, the one thing I heard from the co-founders and Dave, our CFO specifically, was, look, you can't give away company financials. Don't do it. To which I said, you know what, Dave? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> right? I do what I want. Can it? Or something clever. Um, so here it is. This is a screenshot. This is real. This is the back end of our Google Analytics. What I've tracked here are sessions. It's kind of a proxy for brand awareness and revenue from the start of our company until June 1st, 2017. I'm using sessions, as a, again, as a proxy for brand awareness. But we all know if you want people to buy something off your site, you have to first let them know that you exist, then you can drive some traffic to your site, then you get those people to convert. Um, the company started in 2011. Quite frankly, it dawdled along meagerly um, until there's a pretty serious inflection point. I can't, that's right. <laughs> that's what it was. That's, that's when I was hired. 
and uh, kind of took off from there. There's another one. I think that's when I was given creative control of the brand, and then a pretty big uptick. That's when I got my private bathroom. Um, no, this is not all true. Um, I don't have a private bathroom. Um, no, but I do want to. Uh, some some feedback I got from David was, "Hey, you guys are you guys are so known for your videos. Include some videos." Um, a lot of this is just me talking because I want it to be as informative as possible. The videos are always going to be there, so Google them after the talk if you're still interested. Um, they will pop up. But what I'm going to talk about is how we create content and why we create content, the uses for that. Um, and hopefully you'll walk away with some applicable learnings that if there's any content creators out there you can employ, go forward, or brands that want to create content like we do, give these things a shot. So the big themes here are creativity and execution. I'm also going to talk about platform leverage distribution, and that's specifically in regards to Facebook because that's where we actually get over 90% of our views. But the learnings there I feel are applicable to the other platforms out there. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about innovation and persistence, and what that means is the uh, notion of being insistently innovative, but also being persistent and consistent with your brand messaging and your brand voice and how important that is to develop brand resonance. So um, that slide two slides ago was fake. I think it said infinity dollars on the revenue access. <laughs> this slide is real. Um, this, this is the top 52 brands that's put together by Tubular Labs in terms of video views in 2016. So I put this here again for the people who don't know where we, who we are. Um, to sort of contextualize where we lie amongst the global behemoths. These are all the brands that everybody knows. These are household names. You've got Red Bull leading the way with 2.7 billion views in 2016. You've got Lego. You've got Coca-Cola and Walmart rounding out the top 15. Of course, GoPro's in there. We've all heard of Amazon coming in in 33rd at 340 million views. And then you have Chubby's at 295 million views, 39th most viewed brand in the world last year. And what this slide doesn't show is that in those 295 million views, there are 38 videos that have over 1 million views. There are 12 videos that have over 10 million views. There are five videos that have over 20 million views. So I point that out to say we didn't have one screechingly viral sensational hit. We didn't dollar shave club our way into this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the guy makes one viral video. but. Um, we have come up with a way to, to reliably, consistently, systematically create viral content. And that's what I want to talk to you about, how we do that and why we do that. Another thing I like to point out about this chart is how thoroughly we beat Nike, right? <laughs> 50th, Nike, and not shown, Nike spent $3.3 billion on marketing in 2016. $3.3 billion is a lot of money. $3.3 billion is the GDP of a small nation. They spent that on marketing. That's the GDP of Aruba. The one piece of company financials I will part with, we didn't spend that on marketing in 2016. We're still able to beat Nike, right? Another statistic you don't see here, but it's probably the statistic in this deck that I am most proud of, is 76% of our views last year were organic, meaning we didn't pay for them. They're not sponsored views. Another way to put that, three-fourths of our video views last year, zero cent CPV. So that's something I would say no other brand on this list can say. A lot of these brands can pay to get there. We can't, so I want to talk to you about how we compete with the big guys. <coughs> so how to create Chubby's, how to create content the Chubby's way. <laughs> so uh, as you guys can see already, you know, this used to be top secret. I'm going to share it with you because you came out to see me speak. It obviously starts with a good management comptroller who's got to have your director of engineering on speed dial if you're good. If you're good, he's talking with your banquet manager every day. Every task has an owner. And in, in my notes, I said, do this until funny. Has, <laughs> I'm going to move on. Uh, <laughs> um, what this is is a good example of what not to do. It's exactly how we do not operate. Um, Chubby's has a 10-person marketing team. Last year, it was eight. Of those eight people, there's only three people devoted full-time to video creation. And we still are able to beat Nike in annual video views. So what we've learned is our ability to create depends on our ability to be creative and our ability to execute. The example I feel that best encapsulates that is this. In 2015, we joined into a small business big game challenge. 15,000 companies entered. The winner gets a full expense paid Super Bowl commercial. I thought this is going to put us on the map. That's $5 million worth of advertising. We made the top three. We got second. 
Yeah, also not bitter about that. Also don't bring that up in QA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what did we do? We got in a room, we got creative, and we came up with the idea to uh, recreate Mario Kart on Lombard Street. And within weeks of having that idea, we went out 7 a.m., took about an hour shooting us cruising down Lombard Street because we were going to get kicked out eventually, so we had to do it quickly. It took me maybe three hours to edit. We put that video up the week before the Super Bowl, the same week that every other brand in the world puts their video up for the Super Bowl, and we ended up topping Ad Age's viral video chart for the week with 17 million views that week. We beat out uh, Amazon, we beat out Kia, we beat out Axe, right? And we spent $400. A lot of brands, as you guys know, spend more than $400 <laughs> in four hours on their Super Bowl spot. So how did we win? Creativity and execution. It was a creative idea. And then we got up and we got out and we did it. You can have all the ideas in the world, but if you don't do it, they're meaningless. So we've learned that if we want to compete with the big boys, we need to make creativity our competitive advantage. And those, those stats were all 100% organic. How can you guys, how do we make creativity our competitive advantage and how can you? Limit your resources and execute. So I was on the phone maybe a month ago with a guy who was doing a video for Samsung, he told me his video budget was $500,000. I wouldn't know what to do with $500,000, honestly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend that efficiently. Uh, the first time I was given a video budget, it was $200. I was told you can spend $200 your own dollars, trust us, we'll pay you back. <laughs> and um, I was ecstatic. And I actually have a, a guest speaker here to tell you about some of the things I bought for $200. What do you usually carry around with you? X. Fold and touch, gossip girl. All my receipts, Blair Witch Brodge. So in right now, Kenny G, my diary, Breakfast Bear Club, Yo Point and Shoot. In case I come across a computer, Command and Conquer, Pocket Puzzle, Meta Cookie Shell, Double D. Okay. <laughs> right? That's a lot. That's a lot of stuff for $200. Uh, and that's a video I still get comments about to this day. And why was it successful? Because it was creative. I took cargo shorts that I owned, went to a craft store, turned them into Carl the Cargo and bought all that cool stuff. Um, and it's still useful content for us. Um, the other way to do it is creativity, right? You ever see parents or teachers talk to a child about imagination? Kids are encouraged to be imaginative, and they're rewarded when they do so. In adult life, it's not the same for whatever reason, especially in workplaces. So at Chubby's, creativity is a skill that's treated as valuable as any other skill set if not put on a pedestal and possibly the most, the most valuable skill set you can bring to the table. Um, do not do what works. I'm going to skip that because I didn't even spell contribution right. <laughs> Contrib contribution? I don't know what that says. Um, do not do what works. That means um, if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I think we should do this because I did it at this old company and it works, or I think we should do this because it's industry standard, that's a red flag, and I'm saying we're not doing that because in doing that, you are inherently being unoriginal. You're going to get lumped in with every other brand. And all your messaging is going to look like every other brand. So I don't uh, encourage you to do that. Um, practice. This is kind of a scary one for some people, but practice. Uh, creativity is a skill that takes maintenance to maintain and practice to improve. How do you practice creativity? If you are really bold, you can grow, join an improv group. Um, play an improv game, at least. Freestyle rap is one that's scary, but I'm dead serious about it. I do it all the time. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Do it in the shower if you have to. But anything that gets those creativity neurons firing consistently is going to be helpful. If you have the luxury, hire accordingly, right? We all saw what happened when you hire a pretty good director of content. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Um, I told you I'd speak a little bit about Facebook leverage distribution, so everyone should know at this point that distribution on Facebook is engagement dependent. The most critical engagement being shares. If you want your video to go viral, you need the people who see it to share it with their networks and those networks to share it with their networks. So ask yourself, what do you literally share? Go through your texts, look at your Instagram DMs. It's probably not something super transactional. It's probably something that's funny, something that made you laugh or cry or be overcome with joy, right? So seek out the share. This is the three things we seek most frequently. A tag, this is so you. We gotta do this, those were the days. That's relatable, aspirational, nostalgic content. This one's a no-brainer to me. If you want your video to go viral, make your content inclusive. Give yourself a better shot and more people relating to it. Test, learn, improve, repeat. 
force yourself to do things. If you're accustomed to doing a project in 30 days, do it in three, or for $10,000, do it for 1,000, because what you get out of that, at the very least, are learnings that you can employ, go forward, to improve your future content creation. Timeliness, keep your fleek squad goals current. So, maybe an hour, <laughs> maybe an hour, <laughs> Give your thoughts the Kofi fee they deserve. That, that we sent that out probably an hour after that little snafu. Um, Kit Garten, our senior marketing manager, came up with that, and it's one of our best performing pushes to date. That goes out to everybody who has our app. Another one that said, you up, question mark? One of our best performing pushes. Not the one that says sale, 60% off, something that looks like would come from any other brand. Speaking to your audience like you would speak to your friend. Everybody remembers the mannequin challenge. <laughs> Do we get it? Can I move? I told you not to move! <laughs> so that, that's another example of where we had to win on creativity. We weren't going to win. A lot of brands got involved. We weren't going to win on people involved. We weren't going to win on exotic location, production value, amount invested. But we had a creative idea, and we got it done. We put it up. World Star with 5 million followers reposted it, and it landed us in the top 10 brands in PR Weekly of doing Mannequin Challenge correctly. Um, oh, man. Evoke an emotion. That's the bottom line, right? The algorithm runs on engagement. If you want engagement, you need a reaction. It's literally called reactions on Facebook. So how do you get those? Evoke an emotion. Let me wrap up by relating this all back to what we're really talking about, awareness, consideration, conversion. I felt the best way to do it was through viewer testimonials. Uh, this first video is of a buddy of mine rollerblading through San Francisco in some wacky scenarios, like taking a hot dog from a hot dog. Uh, John says to Cody, their branding is our idea of perfectness. Cody says, ha-ha, couldn't have said it better, Ms. Wolf. And <laughs> to which John says, I'm buying everyone a pair of chubbies for their bachelor party. Skies out, thighs out. This next video up top is another buddy of mine, also rollerblading through San Francisco. Um, Jenny says, oh my, now I can go Xmas shopping for my seven sons, some of whom posted this video. If you excuse me, I have a hankering for a taco. Uh, but what that's meant to convey is, look, if you put out content that's on brand, that people enjoy, they're going to know you exist, they're going to go to your website, eventually downstream, they're going to convert, it's going to drive revenue. So I want to end with three cliches quickly. This is a really, really, really bad picture. It's still on our Instagram. We put it up two years after the guys started working on the brand. Got 59 likes, most of whom are friends and family. The caption is still pretty good, the necessary post-brunch pool and beer, right? It's on brand for us. The picture is terrible, but I say this. If you're two years into something you created, you're, you're on social media, you're only getting 59 likes, don't give up. If you have something value additive, truly value additive, stick with it, be persistent, be, pers be consistent, it'll catch on. Practice what you preach. These are two of our co-founders, uh, <laughs> one of whom is engaged in a super intense jet ski race. The other is doing their best macho man Randy Savage impersonation in a Speedo with suspenders tied to his elbows. Uh, if you want to create a creative working environment and you want to expect and demand creativity out of your uh, team members, you have to be willing to get involved yourself. <laughs> Finally, stay humble. Um, so even when you prompt the Wall Street Journal, right, to say there's a new length for men's shorts, don't bring it up in public. That's not, <laughs> come on. If you raise enough money to get a TechCrunch article, don't be braggadocious. Nobody likes a braggart. If Business Insider says you're the company getting America wear short shorts, look, act like you've been there before. Men's Health gets involved at Forbes, and their words says you're the most innovative consumer brand in 2016. The key here is stay humble. You have to <laughs> lead by example. You have to uh, stay humble. No, what I really wanted to say was shoot for the stars. Um, this has always been a dream of mine. I want to thank Funny Biz. I want to thank David. I want to thank you for your time. So now I can take some questions. <laughs>
What's the creative process like? Like, what do you, yeah. how do you, I just want to um, hear. Su super uh, team involved, right? I try to have as many full team brainstorms as possible. I think that's where we get a lot of our best ideas. Um, and um, very, very nurturing and encouraging of any idea, no matter where it comes from. It's creativity and um, inclusion is stress in every department of the business. Um, and we try to cuddle up into the same room and get ideas from everywhere as often as possible. And that's all the time okay. we have. One more round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Should I play this video? Thank you. That's going to play.